I know there's been a bit of drama over the writing of some characters. Mm. To me, that's mostly just being like Rathian in a situation that he's not normally in. Mm. Where he can't just be like, you know, but I'm I'm the black dragon here. I'm the undisputed. Like I know what's up, because now there's other black dragons there who are also like powerful and important, and you know, just just feel like the writing of some of those characters, it, and as well, they're being um, they are all being impacted by Avarice. Yeah, and whispers. Yeah, I, I know people don't like that. I know people go, oh, it's just corruption stuff again. But I think that's why uh, when I was talking about it being... How many Black Dragon story has got to involve overcoming whispers? Yeah, but it's ultimately like... Uh, they seem to be acting out of character. But the point is that they're acting very in character. It's just not the character they usually show. It's that emotions and tensions are there. And they're no longer able to be sitting there going, well, I'm actually fine to... I'm, I'm, I, I'm chill. I'm in, in control here. Sibelian's never had his authority contested. Rathion's never had his, his like heritage contested. And Abyssian's never had people not listen to him because he's like the village elder of High Mountain was yeah. for so long. I'm sure whenever people had disagreements, he went, all right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get this sorted. But he can't do this with his two brothers because they're assholes, basically. And I think that's like... <sighs> The fact that they're, and I guess the way I'd put this most cleanly is that it's just a family drama. Yeah. It's literally, it's like when you look at the, like the way, the specific line that someone called out on Twitter, I don't want to bring it up specifically, but it was like the Sibelian saying to Rathion, oh, I expected more of you after you boasted about saying Nizoth single-handedly. But then anytime Rathion's like talking to you or talking to his like people, his um talent boys, he's like the black talent, he's like, Yeah, I'm I'm training them to be to like I'm telling them about like how cool you are because I'd love them to like have the the inspiration to be as good as you are because you help me so much and all that stuff. And then Sabella in turn and goes, You boast a little bad saying he did it single handedly. And that's like you think about it and if these were real people you could completely understand Rathion being this, like, especially after you read the wedding story where he's clearly a drunken melt. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's clearly, like, really, he, <laughs> he, he tries to put on airs an awful lot. And that's even doubled down whenever it was um, Honey Pelt talks about what he smells like. It's like he spends a lot of time trying to smell good. He covers, covers himself up a lot. And I think that's just, he's putting on airs, but then he gets his heritage uh, challenged by his older brother. And he just tries to rebel and fight. And he's like, yeah, well, I'm, you know, I slew in his Austin handedly. Something you would say in anger. Not something you mean, but something you would say in yeah, anger. Yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot of things that are almost being treated like, you know, these are Wikipedia entries that are being spoken by characters. Yeah, because... And, and maybe that's because traditionally in World of Warcraft, it kind of has been more of that. Well, yeah, World of, World, uh, but, World of Warcraft characters we, never had voices. They, yeah. they were always just instruments for writers. Yeah. Now that's different and people are confused. And I, I do feel that, like... Uh, and it's why, you know, the Sarkaras, you know, falling over thing isn't really an issue to me. Yeah, there is literally just so much more story. Mm. The story is like smoothly continuing from yeah. patch to patch to patch. We know the next big chapter of things with Eridacron. Mm. Perhaps it's the case that the Blue Dragon quest line needed the raid and etc. plot to be yeah. done before it can make sense. I don't exactly know. Um, but it does seem the game's in a much more like healthy narrative place. Just yeah. they actually have the space to tell their story now. Yeah, and I think the uh, one of the issues I think they have is they're doing that and they're almost doing it a little bit too hard where they're putting a little bit too much uh, subtext and they're having a little bit of like, I think people are, people would very need, very much need like a word of God kind of uh, character to explain things a little bit more clearly. Yeah. It's like, I'm not a real fan of that because I, like, I'm able Same. to, I'm able to follow and I like thinking, well, why would Rathion say that? Oh, that'd be great. I just got confused oh, yeah. at the whole Slade is off single-handedly. Yeah. Because it, from my reading, there was no way that the game was ever claiming that that, that is what, that? Yeah. yeah, that he like fully meant that. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. Or that, like, that is now what the developers say is canon. Yeah, it's the stuff that, it's, that, the way I think of it in my head is, it's the stuff that, disagreeing family members would shout at each other over a Thanksgiving table. 
like that's the way I have it in my head where it's like yeah. they're they're clearly emotional because they're both trying to worry about yeah, that stuff. Rathian's a braggart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And Sibelian is a cold, is cold because he grew up that way because he had to make the really hard choices to survive on Outland. So that's why he's like he's kind of going well I'm I'm the real black dragon. It's like uh, yeah, Scythian talks about the Slither mounts. He's like, "Oh, they're just experiments from our from our shitty dad." Or like, yeah, and that's where the dis- the disagreement between the two of them is like it's going to be, where Rathian's going to see that, and Sibelian's going to say that about the Drakes, but he's going to side eye Rathian, like "fuck you, yeah. you, know, you little necrotic reanimated mess of flesh." You're not. You're not. You're like an abomination, like Karog called him in the story, and that's clearly digging at like digging at that parts. Uh, at the the stuff the, the stuff that you sometimes think about mm. but it's clearly like like a dark or like kind of intrusive thought where it's like you know if you say you have a family member who's adopted and like that doesn't like that doesn't bother you however it is true so when you're angry you might want to say well fuck you, you're not even real family and that's like so tropey for a movie thing but that's exactly what it kind of feels like here where it's just yeah, Rathian, what are you, little piece of just shit sewn together? Like, who the fuck are you? Well, Rathian's like, oh yeah, you run away in Outland, you big dumb fuck. And the Abyssin's like, stop fighting, boys. And they're like, who are you? You're hiding in High Mountain, you useless fucking yeah. rat. And, and then seen, Emberthal people, shows up and they're just like, you're not even a dragon. <laughs> and you're like, but they're all family and friends. But Weird about Abyssian. Yeah. Well, I feel like Abyssian to a lot of people does make sense as like, he is the person who would probably do the best job at actually leading a faction. Of course he would, because uh, he's because he's not he's not shown the same immaturity the other two have. Yeah, different types of immaturity. Immaturity, and you might argue that it's a little bit tropey, a little bit uh, cliche to go, who should lead, the one who doesn't want to lead. But that's the way the story's building, and it's sold that fairly. Bran Stark will yeah. win the Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's like it's it's a little bit. Um, Which would have been fine. The problem is how they did it. Yeah, like it's a little bit, a little bit cliche potentially. But it's the way the story's been going, and I think they've sold it convincingly. Where every time they have a conversation, I'm just like, maybe Sibelian, but Ab- Abyssian seems like the better shot. Yeah, that's the, I've always felt that, and I think they've kind of. That's what's important to me. It's like I feel that. So I think I think people have logical disagreements to Abyssian being aspect because they're like oh because because they like Sibelian or Rathia more. But I feel like the like the 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 way that they're portraying it is that Abyssian is the right choice, and that's obviously it's how it's going to go. You're like yeah, because it is because Rathion's a dickhead. Sibelian's too far up his own hole in a different way. It's, it's weird. It's, it's the sort of thing where I, I think people are bringing a little bit too much baggage mm. to it, and that's kind of impacting yeah. their reading of it, I think. A little bit that way. Because, yeah, I feel like that's just how it goes. It's just how it is with with this kind of stuff. Because, like, of the, of like um, there's Emberthal becomes the aspect, 11th our choice. Nah, I wouldn't, well, that wouldn't make any sense. I, I could see it, but she's not even a dragon. Yeah, no, they're, no, they're, no. they're 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 a different thing entirely, basically. But yeah, <laughs> Pelagos. <laughs> ah, Pelagos. Butter Fuck. boy. The butter boy. Butter boy. Yeah. Oh mm-hmm. man, mm. I'd forgotten. Mm. I'd forgotten about Pelagos. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So. <laughs> I, I think basically things are pretty good. Uh, I imagine Emberthal have pr- uh, plenty to do in the next patch because supposedly well, that's, yeah, that's via a- the legacies or whatever it was called, uh, Emberthal and the, the fates of Emberthal mm. and uh, Morazond are somewhat entwined. Yeah, well, that's the 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 thing. Even about what ten one five is the augmentation spec doesn't come back out of nowhere. Yes, and you don't go and unlock it yourself. Other characters do that for you, which I think is stellar because I was immediately laughing like fuck whenever at the end of the campaign, it's like, you know, Emberthal and the Bistian are standing outside, like, are not going to chase him? They're like, nah, I'm not going to there. 
the fuck? <laughs> That's a raid. I don't want to fight. I don't go do this other shit. But then the 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 those two end up turning around going, okay, we'll go do other things. And then ten one five happens, and you see they've done other things, and you're like, sick. You've actually your characters with agency outside of screen time, which is the one thing World of Warcraft hasn't had mm. for I don't know all of time, basically. It's like if you're not on the screen, you cease to exist. Whereas now it's like, oh yeah, where are you? Where are you? Oh, we're just off, you know. We're just off restoring the the uh, black dragonflight essence to the to the drag there. You're like, fuck right, fair enough. Actually, fair enough. Right? Yeah. That, nice, <laughs> nice. That's useful. Thanks. Gives news back. I think that's. I suppose like overall, then it has been happy days. It has. It's been. It's been really quite good. Even yeah. and it's been good enough that even the minor annoyances aren't a problem. I think that's it. It. There are always things that you can try to skewer them for. And, like, yeah. definitely bugs, you know, stuff like that yeah, shouldn't have happened. Um, but, like, the big picture is really good. Mm. Um, yeah, the big picture is really good. Uh, it's funny. I, I'm wondering, then, is the archaeology revamp almost soft-confirmed for 107? Because well, 107. They, they had said that's yeah. more the sort of thing for an 05, or, you know, for a, a 5 or a 7 patch. Mm. Which then makes me wonder, okay, well, if it's not coming in, in 5... Uh, I mean, yeah, will it come decently yeah. soon? Ah, it could be ten two five ten two seven. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. It's like that seems to be seems to be on that kind of on the, on that on that direction. It'll almost certainly be. In. Yeah. But it's but nice that overall it thing. It just it's just nice. It's a pretty good. Game. You know, we're we're in that funny situation. It's like certainly on gameplay content, it's going to take a while for people to come back to WoW. Um, rightly so. Yeah, yeah. It's like when I whenever I look at you know, some of the video content we've done lately, you can mm. sort of see like, fuck, unless this has a turbo broad audience, mm. it will not do well because yes. people aren't there. Like even the gearing guide, you know, after uh, eight days, is only at 112K. It's mm. like, these are low ass numbers compared to like what's normal for, for WoW, even in Shadowlands. Mm. Um, but I mean, so much of that's just because of the way that the damage was done. And I think the game is so much better now that uh, these numbers are bound to turn around, right? I, I, I think uh, it's bound to, like, within the next expansion, kind of get back up there because they really are putting in the work and the content really is good. 